very good morning to all of you and by now if you have not got fed up of seeing my face every saturday at 11 o'clock let me spend this hour with you discussing on one of the issues which is not taken very seriously you know we don't really give too much importance or significance to things like today's topic that is peer pressure among adults you know it's very interesting how we tend to pass the buck down the hierarchy we think as we grow older that just because we have lived more life and more time in this world we are automatically superior or we are automatically know more than what others do etc so we have this habit of passing judgment and passing comments on people who are younger than us and one of the things that we often do is that when we uh, uh, you know are thinking of youngsters children and more so about teenagers and adolescents we keep using this very funny uh, uh, phrase called peer pressure we say that teenage adolescents is peer age you know they listen more to their friends than they listen to their elders whatever else may we may say to them however well we want to advise them or guide them they don't listen to us they are always under peer pressure only what their friends say is important and only that is acceptable to uh, uh, them so it's so easy to pass the buck but have you sat down introspected and thought over what happens to us as adults do we also succumb to peer pressure or do we think that no now i am grown up now i am uh, knowledgeable i know what is right and wrong and i will do what i want to do some of us yes we do mature we do grow up and we do become like that but you will be surprised at how many of us continue to succumb to this thing called peer pressure whether we are 20 or 40 or 60 or whatever the uh, age is now what is peer pressure let me be very clear about what uh, is the topic of today and what i'm talking about you know uh, peer pressure is uh, the feeling you know to behave in a particular in a certain way because your friends your relatives whoever is important in your life they expect it haven't you heard somebody saying that you know i am not allowed to uh, do what i want to do on sundays why is there some policeman sitting on your head and guarding you and preventing you from doing something no no i know my family members you know they don't like me doing something i want to do this 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 on sundays but i am not allowed to do it who did not allow you to do it what rules and regulations were imposed on uh, you who did you who came and physically prevented no i know it you know that they don't like it if i do that they all put up that type of face and then they get very upset and things get bad and i don't want to unnecessarily upset uh, them so i thought it is better it is easier to you know give up to the uh, thing same thing with you know peer pressure also is um, uh, habit by which we automatically do what the others are uh, doing everybody else is doing this so i am also expected to do uh, that ask yourself a very simple question you are in a group of friends or relatives or whoever uh, it is and some general conversation is going on you are not very articulate you are not involving too much you are sitting and listening and nodding your head and just being part of the whole uh, group suddenly somebody says something and the others all of them start laughing you don't feel like laughing you don't think there's anything funny in what the person has said are you able to sit quiet with a straight face most often no whether i like it or not i also start laughing at least a little bit of laugh here and there <laughs> yeah. just to show that i am with uh, uh, you i am part of the uh, group i also am involved with uh, whatever you people are uh, uh, doing 
this is very simple uh, very very you know uh, very um, small example that i gave you but it starts from there and builds up into so many things starting with you know a simple uh, uh, thing like how do you dress you like to dress in a particular manner but you say no you know people don't like it if i dress like this others are you know they feel uh, negative toward me that i am not allowed to uh, dress like that they look down upon me if i dress like this and the interesting thing is you know this peer pressure business is not across the board if i have 20 people who are close to me and with whom i am interacting at a very personal level there may be five who don't like me to dress in a particular uh, uh, manner the other 15 are neutral to them it doesn't matter your dressing style is not important to them they share an equation with you and so many other different planes but they don't judge you because of your uh, you know uh, dressing style and they definitely don't comment on uh, uh, it or they don't frown on it okay fine it's your life and uh, what you are doing but unfortunately what we uh, do is that we focus only on those 5 out of 20 and when these five become vocal they pass certain judgments what is this ali look at you and can't you dress up better here uh, this uh, type of uh, shirt doesn't suit you or this color just doesn't match with uh, uh, you why do you do that simple comments like that and whether i realize it or whether i do it subconsciously i start behaving in a manner only to oblige the others that strong feeling of wanting to fit in wanting to belong this is something which i have been telling maybe i'll take it up as a topic one of these uh, saturdays later that how willingly we want to surrender our autonomy by belonging to a group a party a political party a religious group a family a community a club and association when we get into that what happens is that we are willingly giving up our autonomy our way of behavior our likes and uh, dislikes so this is what peer pressure. see one thing let me tell you whether you are an uh, adolescent whether you are an adult whether you are a senior citizen there will inevitably be this thing called peer pressure there will be people around you who would like you to behave in a particular way who would like you to fit into something who would like you to be part of what their likes and dislikes and their behavior patterns and are why do they do that let us understand that first they want to gather as many people on their side as possible they are not 100% sure what they are doing is right or not but there is strength in numbers if a 100 people say the same thing it is presumed to be right if only two people say it they are brushed aside so they want more and more people be it a political leader be it a religious guru be it a motivational uh, trainer be it a person who is spreading some sort of philosophy or way of uh, thinking be it a person who has taken up some cause or some uh, activity which they want to propagate all these people remember they are looking for numbers because it is human mentality that when you see large numbers you automatically presume that so many people cannot be wrong you go into the marketplace anything you are going to buy a simple thing like vegetables which will last you one day and you just cook it and eat it off right you see 10 people selling vegetables you see one vegetable seller who's got 10 customers clamoring all around him you automatically go there 
because so many people prefer that person's vegetables, they must be definitely better than the others. That's how we think. There is no logic in it. If you sit down to think, just because 10 people are going there, does it mean that his vegetables are better than the others? No, there isn't. But we get taken in. At that moment, we don't apply logic. We just apply this thing called numbers. In fact, I know, I remember good old days in uh, Bombay, near church gate station or somewhere, there would be this fellow who's, you know, peddling something. Maybe those days ball pens had suddenly come in and everybody was, was selling and buying ball pens. So he would come onto the footpath, you know, with a big uh, plywood tray and he would have those ball pens over there and he's trying to sell. Now everybody is in a hurry, everybody is passing by. Normally, hundreds and thousands of people would pass by without even giving a second look. They would just peep and see that, yes, there is a... Uh, you know, somebody selling some uh, ball pens or something. Maybe sometime later I'll see, I don't need one so badly right now, and you'll pass on. Now, the trick they would do is they would gather some friends or partners, and those fellows would stand in front of him pretending to be customers. And they would be loudly saying, Oh, this ball pen only two rupees. Are you are fantastic. Give me three of them, you know, I will buy uh, uh, three. Another person says, no, oh, I will not get, you're running out of stock, I think, no, 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 I want 10 ball pens, you know, I want for all my family, then tomorrow if I come, I won't get. All this they will be saying loudly surrounding this fellow. And before you realize it, so many people who are otherwise in a hurry to walk and go to their offices, they will stop. And the moment they come into this group of these 10, uh, you know, friends who are pretending to be... Uh, customers, they would start saying loudly, hey, which one? Sir, you're also buying, no? No, 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 I want this, uh, wait, 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 before he takes, I want this green one, you please give it to, uh, to me. So you start thinking that before you know it, all the ball pens will be over and you won't get anything. And then somebody else says, I want to buy six of them. Instead of 12 rupees, can you give me for 10 rupees, please? I'll buy six of them. Okay, don't tell anybody, huh? otherwise I'm not giving for less than two rupees each. So here, as an exception, I'll give you. Sir, if you want six of them, no, then I'll give you for ten rupees. Forget about six, you're not even sure whether you want to buy one ball pen. You just stop because there was a crowd there, right? But what do you do? Oh, I'm getting one free. I'm getting six for the price of five, no? Yeah, I have my cousins, I have my so-and-so, I'll pass it on to them. Okay, here is 10 rupees, give me six ball pens and happily the person walks off. I'm giving you this example to show you how people manipulate. If you are the type of person who somehow has this, you know, little bit of a low self-esteem, a need to belong, if you have this fear of uh, rejection, if you are perpetually craving for that need of safety, security, of having people around you who agree with you and who are on your side, if that need is strong, you inevitably you know, suffer from the effects of peer pressure. Now, at the same time, I also want to tell you that peer pressure is not always negative. Peer pressure can be positive also. Let's have a look. I've just raised up <clears throat> five, six simple points about what we mean by positive peer pressure. So Sonal is here with me. She has made some very nice, interesting slides along with Jennifer. And we'll just show you what are, what do I mean by positive peer pressure. Here is Sonal's slide. I'll just tell you where the time the slide uh, comes up. Going for higher studies, aiming higher. If you have a group of people who are always aiming higher, want to improve their qualification, then this and that, 
and you get caught in that and say, yes, I also want to aim higher. I want to achieve a little more. I want to get more motivated. Being encouraged to join teams of interesting activities. When you're alone, you don't feel like doing it. Yeah, I have this hobby. I wanted to learn. I wanted to get into this. But when you have a group who says we are all going and joining that team or that training or that club or that association, OK, yes, because I have friends who are doing it, I will also uh, doing it. Similarly, following rules, keeping out of trouble. Sometimes I get tempted. You know, I want to break rules. I want to do something. But if I'm in a group of people who say, no, yeah, let's not get into trouble. Let's not break rules. Let's not do this. So I also feel compelled towards uh, uh, that. We learn discipline when we have positive uh, uh, peer pressure. See, everybody is following certain rules, norms. I will also follow that. Then respecting others. See, because of peer pressure, because others are doing things properly and you feel answerable to them, you can respect the others, which leads to people treating you better. The more you respect people, people will treat you better. They will regard you. They will respect you. And lastly, volunteering, trying out new activities, breaking free from the monotony or routine. You know, you got caught in that daily routine. And now if you have a group who comes and says, no, no, you know, Sundays we are going to do some social work and we are planning to do this or that. So you say, OK, okay since I've got this nice group of friends who are doing this, let me also do it. These are some of the examples of what I would call as positive peer pressure. My concern is more when there is negative peer pressure. Please remember there are more people trying to influence you through negative peer pressure than there are people who are imposing positive peer pressure on you. So again, about six, seven points I have narrowed down to that is how this negative peer pressure affects you. What are the forms in which it comes to you? Habits like smoking, alcohol, even drugs. These are the type of things which, hey, God, man, you are not, uh, come on, uh, one beer will not uh, affect you. Take it, yeah, it's OK. We are all drinking. Uh, where do you, you want to be a CC? And you succumb to it. Being encouraged to get into confrontations, fights, Normally, you're a very uh, docile person. You keep to yourself. You don't involve. But here is this whole group. No, no, no. This is injustice. How can we allow that fellow to get away? Come on. Let's fight it out. Let's do this. Let us not. Uh, 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 and you get into that uh, uh, thing. Sometimes even giving up on moral values, certain basic morals, values that you uh, follow. Because of peer pressure, you give up on uh, then you say it's okay. Everybody is doing it, type of thing. I keep repeating this, no? That so often we do things just by saying everybody is doing it. So what's wrong here? If it were bad, bad, then everybody would not be doing uh, uh, it. Either you could also be, uh, uh, you know, getting into bullying, teasing uh, uh, others, becoming, you know, those uh, type of people who pass uh, satirical comments, putting down other people. Just because everybody is doing it, you also get sucked into it, and you also think it's a big joke. Even things like putting your health at uh, uh, yeah, risk, you know, certain activities, certain things which you know which are not good for health, overeating, eating oily foods, or eating in places which are not very healthy, or going long uh, time periods without uh, eating properly. All this could be because of peer pressure. And lastly, I already mentioned to you wearing clothes that you don't uh, uh, like. Showing your own, what do you say, uh, demeanor and your uh, persona only to satisfy others rather than yourself. So ask yourself, are you, you know, your own uh, self? We start with uh, uh, that. Are you making choices because others want you to do it? Ask yourself this question. Nobody else needs to tell uh, uh, you. You answer. Are we taking? Are you taking refuge under saying that 
yeah, my friends won't like it. No, my relatives will feel bad if I don't do this. If I do that, so and so will uh, say that. And ask yourself what activities you do which do not make you feel good about yourself. I hate doing this, this, this year. I don't like to do it, but what to do? It? Everybody is doing it, so I have to uh, uh, doing it, do it. Ask yourself these type of uh, uh, questions. Are you doing things for others which can affect your health, your well-being, your mental health also, which is so neglected, I keep reminding people. So am I doing things which in the long run is affecting my well-being, affecting my personality, affecting my... Do I look back and you know say that, is this what I wanted to do? Will I feel ashamed? Will I regret whatever I can do? Please list out certain things if you are doing that so that you can become conscious of uh, uh, it. Is your life heading in directions which has uh, uh, been influenced by uh, others? People have told me this is the best way. Everybody said take up this career. Everybody says stay in this city. Everybody says you have to live in this type of apartments. So is your life heading in directions which have been influenced by others? Given a choice, I would have been different. When you are upset or confused, do you automatically go by what everybody else is doing? Whenever you get a little confused, you are pulled down, you are upset. This is what I mentioned earlier also. Do you have this habit of giving up on the autonomy that you uh, um, have? Your ability to do things by yourself. Okay. Now, once you have done this sort of introspection and you have asked yourself these uh, uh, questions, and if you are realistic about it, and if you say, yes, these are the areas where I think I should be my own person, I should think for myself, I should take uh, decisions by myself, then comes the solution part of it. What do I do if I find that to greater or lesser extent, I also am succumbing to peer pressure. So here are some strategies which can help you to handle negative uh, peer pressure. Very simple things. Anybody can do it. Acknowledge when and in what areas you are prone to peer pressure. That was the previous exercise which I gave you the earlier slide was meant to do that. So are you willing to acknowledge that, yes, I spend my time in the evenings doing this just because my friends want us to do it, everybody says this, I don't feel like doing it, etc. Acknowledge it to uh, yourself. Develop ways to resist going with the uh, flow. Ways and means. No, I'm sorry, you know, my mother not keeping very good health, so I thought I'll spend the evenings with her for the next few days. After some time, I'll come and join you people, okay? They learn different techniques, ways, methods to resist that temptation of succumbing to peer pressure. Pay attention to how you feel. Be mindful, as they say. I think most of you may be aware. This very wonderful um, you know, technique called mindfulness. I be in the present and in my own self. So I pay attention to how I feel. I feel negative. I feel unhappy. I feel a sense of resistance. I feel I'm not going in the right direction. Pay attention to that and then plan ahead. Set your own short term, long term goals. The more you have goals, the more you have a direction, the more you are aware of the path in which you're walking, less are the chances that you will get pushed or pulled by peer uh, pressure. Sometimes it also helps to talk to the person who is pressurizing. There will always be one leader among that uh, group who will be most vocal, who will try to put you down, who will try to make you feel that if you don't uh, you know, come with us, then that means that you are no good. You have to be with uh, uh, us. Neighbors envy, owners pride type of uh, uh, thing. जो अपनी पत्नी से करते हैं प्यार वो प्रेशर कुकर से कैसे करें इनकार all this media publicity and all that they have learned from this thing called peer pressure. So 
talk to the person who is pressurizing and see if you can make him stop, if he is important enough to you. Give an excuse and move away when you feel uh, pressurized. Get away from that uh, atmosphere where people are talking only one particular thing. People are trying to influence you and to influence each other. At that moment, even if you give a gap and get away, that you know line of thought breaks. And then when you come back, you can start a conversation or activity in a different manner. Have friends with similar values and beliefs who respect your opinion. This is very important. Make a list of your friends and acquaintances and relatives with whom you spend time and check how many of them are people who have similar values, who have beliefs and who respect my opinion. Okay. Then let me move on to the last slide of the day. Ways to become or remain an independent thinker. It can be done. It's not difficult. First is reading. People have given up this habit. And that's one of the reasons why. Because we have moved from reading to TV and you know these small screen and all. And there we are bombarded with pressure. Books never bombard you with pressure. Remember that. And other people's words. Intellectual people, deep thinking people, people who's, who have been acknowledged as good authors, their thoughts create a balance in you. Identify the other's argument and evaluate its uh, value. Is he right? What is he saying? Does it make sense? Do I really have to follow it? Sit back and think when you are in a calm uh, mood. Large number of people Saying something does not make it the truth. That is very funny thing which happens so commonly. So many people, I told you right in the beginning. So many people are going to that shop. So many people are going to that guru. So many people are joining that political party. So many people are doing this. No, it does not make it the truth. And it does not make it the most suitable decision for you. Learn to consider the best option. In any situation, assess pros and cons before you choose the right option. It's not so difficult. It can be done. Have the courage to swim against the tide. Three Idiots, there was a wonderful movie. And in that, there was an amazing song, Behti Hava Sathavo. Just go through that song once. You will be amazed. Swimming against the uh, tide. Interact with people. Accept responsibility for your uh, actions. People who accept responsibility for their action, no? They can keep away from uh, uh, peer pressure most uh, easily. Interact with people who are different than you. And then calmly evaluate. This person is saying go in this path. That person is saying go in that direction. That person is saying this. Which is the right one? Make a habit of interacting with different types of people. You'll get a wider exposure about what is uh, um, happening. Have patience and resilience. If you're always in a hurry to do something, no, you'll never be able to uh, succeed. Somehow you'll end up under peer pressure. And... Don't try to impress. Do what you think is best. Ask yourself, this is what I feel. I have a conviction. I have a belief. I have a certain principles. Travel. You'll be amazed at how much our horizons get widened. Our thinking gets widened. Particularly after these two years of uh, the lockdown and the way we were you know, prevented from traveling. And for travel, you don't have to go across the globe and get visas and plane tickets. Travel 100 miles beyond your place. And there is so much to learn from uh, you. And lastly, focus on giving respect and you will get it. Very simple things, right? There's lots more. We'll talk about it. And I already see some nice, interesting comments which have come. 
But as I always do, I want that one minute break to have my cup of tea. And Sonal is going to give you one or two quick messages. I'll be back. Yes, as Ali was speaking about peer pressure, I was just thinking about the program that we are going to have next week, next Saturday. Teachers Day celebration that we are doing next week and we are going to felicitate teachers who have completed 15 years and above in their teaching profession. I feel they are the ones who don't get succumbed to peer pressure. They are the ones who face failures many times because they do expect that their children do their best but and they try their best to educate them, mold them, go beyond syllabus, try to give them whatever best they can. Yet they see that, you know, sometimes they didn't achieve what they achieved. But yet next year they stand up, get going, doing what they want to do for the children, again with the fresh mind, fresh heart and the fresh spirit. I think they really need and uh, deserve the salutes from us. So next uh, weekend, that is Saturday, 3rd September, Banjara Academy is going to felicitate many such teachers. And uh, I will cover up that. Uh, I'll do the coverage of that program and definitely post it on the Facebook. Yeah. Apart from that, we are closing our admissions, almost closed, I would say. I, Another one week and we will be like telling it's enough is enough and we will have, you will have to wait if you want to join for the diploma in counseling skills. We will be more than uh, ready to welcome you. But as of this year, I think we are closing down. So if at all you think that, yes, this last minute, but I think this year this person needs to or will be benefited from our diploma in counseling skills, you can still recommend and we will be, you know, on a special case basis, we will consider it. And let me tell you one thing. Diploma in Counseling Skills is one of that course which will help you understand how not to succumb to peer pressure and be yourself. That's the experience I have got and that's what I thought. Let me tell you in this break time. And here is Ali for you. Come Ali. Ah, yes. Okay, we've already got some nice, interesting comments. Let me read them out for you one by one and give my little two bits worth as we go along. Okay, Surekha, as usual, is one of the first to really come up and I really admire her for her enthusiasm, her involvement and the way she takes interest in a lot of the aspects of human behavior and the way she reaches out to her counselees. So hats off to you, Surekha. Yours was the first comment, I think, which came up. Surekha said, pressure is what bursts a pipe and pressure is what transforms a lump of coal into a diamond. No pressure, no diamonds. How can we best handle peer pressure so that we end up a shining gem? Exactly. I think this comment, uh, question of yours came up before I started listing out. You know, These are the ways and means where you can use positive peer pressure, where you can, you know, be your own pressure point where you become mindful, you start focusing on yourself, you start forming your own identity, you boost up your self-worth, your self-concept, your self-esteem and say, I have a right to make mistakes. I will be my own person. I will do what I feel is right. Whether I succeed or not, I have a right to Fail and try again and move on. Okay. The same way, now we have Roshan. She's also a very active member of our uh, uh, group. She says, never been affected by peer pressure. Always followed what my heart says. And I feel I am heading in the right direction. Yes. Even if it is not the right direction, Roshan, you are heading in the direction which you believe in. That is very important. It is your life. You are answerable to it. Roshan also says, today I have come to know how popular I am in the club. 
people are cancelling going for lunch just because I have prior commitment. Not bragging about myself, but the helping hand I have extended to others in my family and my friendly nature I have attracted a lot of good people in my life. Yes, that's what we were talking about, no? You don't have to succumb to others. You do what you feel like. You do what is important. You reach out to those whom you feel are important uh, to you. But the moment you find that any of those is trying to influence and asking you, because it happens. If you are nice to A, A will say, why are you being nice to B? Why are you being so friendly with uh, uh, B? Here, I am there. No, you spend more time with me. Simple things. In adult life, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about children. And before we realize it, we succumb to it. Surika also said, pressure comes from within and so much be mastered from within. How can we cultivate an immunity towards other people's mind viruses that are diminishing our self-esteem? Yes, there are wonderful uh, you know, vaccinations against such viruses uh, uh, also. Number one is to boost your self-esteem which I'm not going to take up here because it's a topic by itself. I had uh, you know, uh, taken a session on that, I think, two years back. We can, again, maybe later have another thing, which I feel is a very, very important area. But, but one is you build up your own self-esteem. The second is all the points which I gave you in the first half of today's uh, program. How do you ensure that you do not you know, succumb to that, have a mind of your own, have that independent uh, uh, thinking, Learn to evaluate the difference between positive peer pressure and negative uh, peer pressure. Yes, Rita says, can you please explain how to handle peer pressure positively without affecting one's uh, uh, emotions? Let's say this person comes and makes comments on you. Why do you behave like this? Why can't you do like that? Why do you leave your child and go for work? Or why do you do that? Or why do you dress like that? Whatever it may be. Now, what you need to do to handle this peer pressure in a positive manner is to look straight into the eye of the person, have a smiling demeanor and say, thank you so much. You are so concerned about me and you're giving me advice. I really appreciate the interest that you are taking in me. I will keep it in mind. I will evaluate your advice and then I will take the right decision, whatever I have to. Thank you and move away from my the next thing is evaluate. As soon as you get some free time, if necessary, even write it down if necessary. This is what the person uh, said in case I'm going to forget. And when you're free, sit down and just reflect over it. Was there any meaning in what the person said? If so, then it is positive peer pressure. If not, then it is negative peer uh, pressure. But either way, what I am going to do, I may take it partially, I may do it later, I may do it for a short while, but decision has to be mine. Yes, we have uh, Vinita, also a very regular part of our group interactions. Meta says, Ali, I recently read an article in Hindu on peer pressure. Just wanted to understand, is it true? that those who are insecure and underconfident fall easily. Yes, it is a fact, Minita. I mentioned this. I am reiterating it again that people who feel insecure, people who feel incomplete, and people who are underconfident, will I be able to survive on my own? Can I take the right decisions? Will I be lonely? Will I be left out? Once I am in a group, I feel secure. How you feel secure physically, you know, if it is very dark and you're on a lonely road. If you see two, three people walking, you go close to that group and you start walking with them, you feel secure. That is physical security. That is good if you aim for that. But mental security should not depend on others. It should be by your own self-esteem. Right, Pratima says, uh, so-called manipulators target people to win how to overcome them, and how are they so successful? Yes, Pratima, they are successful because we make them successful. They are always looking for targets. They are looking for victims who have this thing of 
low self-esteem, feeling of insecurity, having this strong need to belong, unsure about their own uh, selves, not able to take their own decisions. They target such people and catch hold of uh, uh, them. Now, when you realize that somebody is trying to manipulate uh, uh, you and trying to win over you in some way or the uh, other, you have to look the person straight in the eye. I mentioned in one of the slides that I had shown, talk it over with the person. I think maybe with all good intention, you are trying to change me. You feel that it will be better for me to switch over to this or do this activity. Maybe you have very good intention that you are doing this. But I wanted to make it very clear that I know what I'm doing and I will continue what I'm doing. So if you go on pressurizing me, if you go on thinking of different ways and means of trying to you know, make me change or something, unnecessarily you'll be putting in so much effort. No, I don't want you to do that. We'll talk about other things. So there are other areas where I would like to listen to you and learn from you. But this, what you're telling me, I'm very clear. I gave a serious thought to what you said, but I don't I feel what I'm doing. For me, maybe this is right. Whatever your good advice, from now on, can we stop talking about it? Try it out. Sometimes it succeeds. Yes. We have Saraf Saab from Maharashtra, who is also our regular team member in this uh, Saturday discussions. He says, many a time in adolescent and youth age, many friends will divert towards them to do the wrong things. Since they know that they even succumb to that pressure, but they won't confess because they will not gather others. So parents should be aware so that their children who go with such naughty friends. Very true. And Saraf Sab, I'm sure, speaks out of experience because he looks after children and takes care of them in the hospital and all these things. So I'm sure he's speaking out of his own experience. And this is very good advice that he's giving to parents, teachers, elders, whoever it is, that this happens to them. And if we learn how to resist peer pressure, we can be more successful and more effective in training or teaching youngsters to keep away from peer pressure. Right. Surekha says peer pressure is the pressure you put on yourself to fit in. That's right. Remember that. This is very good words which Surekha said. It is the pressure you put yourself to fit into that more than what the pressure the other person is uh, doing. Character is revealed when pressure is applied. How can we cultivate better character strengths? to counteract this bully called peer pressure. That's what I've been talking in the first hour. Uh, how? What you need to do, she's used the right words, Rekha said, character strengths. Strengthen your character. Strengthen your personality. Strengthen your self-confidence and more important, your self-esteem. The more you keep doing that, it is like building up an immunity. You know how if there are viruses going around and all that, people say, no, that if your inner metabolism, if your inner strength is good, if your immunity is uh, good, then the virus doesn't hit you. Or even if it hits you, it doesn't have a great impact. You can just pass it off within a few days and get back to normalcy. So the same thing applies over here. You have to build up your mental uh, immunity. You have to constantly keep giving yourself positive strokes. You have to keep reminding yourself, I am a complete person by myself. I have the right to run my life. I have the right to take decisions. I have the right to take wrong decisions and I have the right to fail. I will again get up and I will start moving. I will have learned a lesson if I fail. And I will use that lesson as a stepping stone to give better direction. But I will not do it only because so and so, so and so, so and so is telling me. Yes. Vinita says, actually, it's true, depending on individuals, how much pressure they are taking on themselves. That's a very relevant point. How much pressure are you taking on yourself? And I told you this also, that the more you are taking that pressure, the more you are open to peer pressure, the more these manipulators will find you as a victim. They keep floating around, you know. When they find this person is not responding, this person has that strength of character and his or her own mind, then they get fed up of you and they 
move out. So you have to build yourself into that and you have to create that image that people don't come and bug you every now and then. Roshan says, sometimes peer pressure can ruin a person's health by making him take drugs and then get addicted. I mentioned that in one of the slides, no? that one can get into addictions, one can get into substance abuse. How do you avoid such friends who make you sick and follow with their wrong um, advice? That's what I've been uh, talking about. Be very clear. Here is this person who comes and says, hey, everybody is smoking cigarettes. Yeah, what's so great about it? It gives you, really makes you feel like, you know, on the internet, there are so much of material available showing that how smoking actually helps you to think better. It sharpens your brain. All those funny things they will come out with. Thank you. I'm not interested in the internet. And I'm not interested in smoking. I think my brain works perfectly fine. And even if it doesn't, it's okay. I'll learn. I'll pick it up the long way instead of taking this shortcut. If it's helping you, I'm very happy for you. Please continue. But I don't think I would like to try that out. Okay, so these are some of the, you know, very interesting comments or whatever uh, you uh, uh, call it, suggestions, questions, so many things have been uh, uh, coming up. Like, for example, Divya has said, sometimes you are manipulated and you will not realize it. Later on, you will realize it, how to handle and correct it. Yes, that is what I was saying. Prevention is better than cure. So what do you do? When you realize that you are getting manipulated and you have not realized it, you suddenly realize that you have these friends in your colony who have been putting pressure and making you do things. And you sort of slipped into that and you went deeper and deeper into uh, that. And at one point you sort of woke up and said, what am I doing? This is not what I would like to be doing. This is not what makes me happy. I think I'm doing it only just to fit in with that group of my neighbors or my colony people or whoever uh, it may be. Now, when you know that you have made this mistake, it's exactly like I was telling you about a virus that, see, last time when the virus came, I succumbed to it. I was sick for so many days. All my energy was sapped. It took me so many days to get back to normal seats. So now this time I am going to inoculate myself. And there are various ways of, uh, you know, doing it. To avoid that manipulation, firstly, selecting the type of people whose company you keep. Do I necessarily have to be only with that group of ladies who are manipulators and who make me do things which I don't like? Can't I find others who are a little more positive, a little more thinking on my own, allowing me to think on my own and have my own this thing? Let me see. It doesn't matter the numbers. That's what I'm telling you. That group may be 20 people and it may be very good uh, to be part of that 20 people's group. But there may be two others who are good enough. You don't need 20 people to keep your company and to be active. Two is uh, uh, enough. And once you find those positive people, start spending more time. Including, let us say that you cannot get away from that manipulator's uh, uh, group. It may be your own family members. It may be somebody very close to you from whom it is not that easy to get away from those uh, people. Then what do you do? You get away from them mentally. Insulate yourself. Every time that there is an interaction with such people, remind yourself that, see, these people are trying to manipulate me. I will have a thinking of my own. I will do what I want to do. Ah, Sanjay has a very nice, uh, no, Vijay Lakshmi um, says, sometimes peer pressure can bring our potential to the peak of which we are unaware. Yes, that is also a fact. That's why I started off in the beginning itself by saying that peer pressure can be both positive and negative. Even among children, I have seen peer pressure of the type where a student who has lost interest in studies and who's wasting his time, his friends get together and say, hey, dude, you better get down to studies, man. You'll be left behind. We are all studying hard and we want to get admission in good courses and we want to do something. Come on, we'll help you. To... Nah, yeah, that subject is boring. I'm not getting there. And come sit with us. We'll teach you whatever has to be done. But we don't want you to be left behind, boss. You are a good friend of ours. We want you along with us. That is positive uh, uh, peer pressure. And if you look, 
you will find such people. Haji Sanjay says, while I always avoided getting into peer pressure, networking and being into the cool bad habits during college days and ended up having minimum like-minded friends, ended up by being called reserved person, successfully overcame being influenced by peer pressure. Hearty congratulations to Sanjay and to various other people uh, uh, like that. This is what I was telling you a couple of minutes back now, that if you, you know, have that uh, willingness to avoid and resist peer pressure, you end up having minimum like-minded friends. Are numbers important? No. I have two friends who are excellent, who are very genuine, who are very sincere, and I love them, and they respect my wishes. I have 20 others who are also very enjoyable, very nice, lively. Normally, I enjoy their company, but I realize that they are trying to manipulate me. They were forcing me. When I go and spend time with them, they say, come, 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 let's go and have a beer. Let's bunk classes and do this. Let's do that. Let's do something. That is when I must realize that that having minimum like-minded friends, as Sanjay said, is much better. Let them label you as a reserved uh, person. How does it matter if they put these labels on you, isn't it? Let them do that. You have your own mindset. Ah, Savita says, sometime peer pressure keeps us upgrading to, we try to learn a lot. Exactly. I have been a staunch believer that every experience of life teaches you something provided you are willing to learn. That is the important factor. Some people have a bad experience. They are put under peer pressure, they are bullied, whatever, uh, manipulated. And they keep on complaining. See, the world is so bad. See how people will treat you. There is no justice in this uh, world. See A, B, C, whom I trusted. They are the ones who let me down. See so and so to whom I've done so many favors, that person cheated me or you know, spoke such bad things about me or was trying to force me to do something. Such people never done. But it is entirely up to you to say, hey, I went through this very bad experience. It was painful. It was a setback uh, to me. I felt miserable when that happened to me, but it passed. Somehow I managed, I survived, and now I am out of it. Now, when nothing is happening to me, now when I'm not under pressure, can I sit down and think, why this happened to me? Most important, what was my contribution to it? Did I in any way encourage the person to manipulate me? Did I show my vulnerability? Did I have a low self-esteem and did I go looking for, you know, that uh, uh, verification of that uh, positive uh, strokes from those people? When I went there and they realized that I am a victim, I am vulnerable, they took advantage of me. So now what do I need to do? I need to think. I need to build up that if you recall the last two slides, I think some of you would have photographed it or you can do it later also. This will remain on FP throughout. So it's not that it's just there between 11 to 12. Either you, your friends, anybody who is interested later also. <clears throat> not everybody may be free on Saturday mornings. So you can tell people who are interested in this topic that they can log in later. And particularly the slides that I put in, the idea being that putting it into writing and putting it into black and white, what happens is that it is accessible to you at any given uh, time. You can, you know, work on these uh, uh, things. Yes, Sonal says, <clears throat> does consistently working on self-awareness be helpful to stay under check of peer pressure? Yes, Sonal, it does. But when, I, when you say consistently working on self-awareness, one doesn't have to make it a full-time occupation. One doesn't have to give up all other activities and leisure and interactions and all the time keep doing, you know, self-inspection. I will be happy if you do it periodically. Every now and then, 
particularly when there's a crossroad, when there's a bad experience, when something has happened which has shaken you up, the moment you are through with it, sit down and do self-introspection. The other time when you need to do it is when life is going smoothly. Nothing bad or nothing untoward has happened to me. Nice routine going on very easily since many, many days. But there is no guarantee what is going to happen tomorrow. So this is the time for me to stop, introspect, review, and if necessary, change direction. Ah, Gayatri has asked a very nice question. Do both bullies and victims have low self-esteem? Victims who allow themselves to be manipulated, who succumb to peer uh, pressure, you know, who get influenced easily by others, are generally, definitely people. One of the factors could be low self-esteem. It happens very frequently. When it comes to bullies, they may or may not have low self-esteem. One is bullies who have low self-esteem and to cover that up, they try to dominate over others to prove that I am also a great guy because they themselves don't believe it. The other is that the person may have a super high ego. The person may think that I, whatever I do, whatever I say is absolutely right. And that is why I have the authority to tell others what to do and what not to uh, do. So bullies can be of different uh, kinds. We have to analyze them individually. Why a person became a bully? Does he bully everybody or does he only select one odd person and goes on bullying that person? So many factors keep coming into uh, play. But my concern is more for the uh, you know, victim rather than the bully. There are ways and means to work with the bullies and we have been doing that time and again. If anybody is interested specifically in cases where you need to deal with uh, bullies, please get in touch with us. I keep reminding you that we run a free counseling service in person, on phone and by email. So tell everybody you know also that whenever anybody wants to you know, clarify these type of things, specific instances, do bullies have this low self-esteem? How do I deal with uh, uh, these uh, things? Whenever that happens, no, please make sure that you can reach out. We are a fairly good team of people. Some of them have expertise in something. Sonal, whom you heard in the uh, break, she spends almost all her time with children of all ages, looking into their developmental aspects, looking at the corrective aspects, academic, social, emotional. So many of these cases we refer to so well. We've got, of course, our, you know, the uh, uh, great Ram Sami, who works in the area of mental health, cancer, palliative uh, uh, care, wonderful people, each one of them. So we have certain volunteers and counselors who are experts in certain areas. Some others who are basically very humane uh, uh, people and who are there for uh, people. This is what you need to be looking into. This is what you can uh, do. It is not very uh, difficult. It can be worked on each of these issues that I have been speaking on every you know, Saturday you will find that there are ways and means of dealing with it. Very often I come across people who almost sort of give up and say, I am suffering from this, this, this pressure or this mental stress or this relationship issues. And I think I cannot do anything uh, uh, in uh, uh, that uh, aspect. So they feel helpless. That is where I want to tell you without any hesitation that most of the issues can be overcome. It takes time, effort, consistency, but you can do it. So a simple thing like next Saturday's topic, tolerance versus acceptance. We keep using both these words very, very often. No? What is tolerance? What is acceptance? What's the difference between the two? We'll discuss it next Saturday. Please join us at 11 o'clock and I will be looking forward to the second half, which is your comments and your suggestions and your questions. 
So thanks a lot. See you next Saturday with this topic, tolerance versus acceptance.